replacing some old wood, rotten wood, uh, replacing posts, rebuilding posts and railing, and miscellaneous things around the house. We're replacing uh, posts upstairs on the main balcony, and then some railing, doing some patchwork on some of the rotted wood. Miscellaneous boards that are rotten, we're replacing a screen door, fixing another door. That's about it. Today we are at Tinker Swiss Cottage Museum and Gardens, and we are located in Rockford, Illinois. The house was built by Robert Tinker and his wife Mary. Uh, it started in 1865 as a one-room cottage, and after that he kind of built on and built on, and by 1883 it pretty much looked like how it does today. What we do is when we have people here on a tour, we teach them a little bit of everything. We teach them some architecture, we teach them some local history, we teach them about the history of the family itself, and also how this family is incorporated into local history. Mr. Tinker was one of the founding members of the Rockford Park District. He was also at one time uh, the mayor of Rockford, and basically they're one of the founding families of the Rockford area, and very important to Rockford history. They helped build the industrial success that Rockford was in the late 18 and early 1900s. You know, I've been involved in Tinker Cottage for over 65 years. I'll take that back. I've been involved for over 60 years. I uh, went there uh, and got inspired uh, when I was in the sixth grade. And uh, I think it's one of those things that uh, you never think about when you're a kid, but uh, it certainly made an impression upon me about the architecture that was there. And it's been one of those lifelong love relationships, I guess, of knowing that as a kid all the way into my adult life. One of the most interesting things about this is the sighting of the building on the bluff, which really provides a unique, you know, the, the uniqueness of the architecture. And we think of Swiss cottages, we think of the mountains and the Alps. Of Switzerland and how a, a structure like this could end up sitting on the edge and I think when Robert Tinker ended up determining that this is what he wanted to do the site was really pretty spectacular. The variety of details that are in the exterior of the building, the finials are all different from one side of the house to the other. Certainly the, the inside with the, the library which is really one of a kind and very spectacular and the types of woods that he used. He was part of that natural movement back in the day of using natural materials and using the organic pieces that really have made up Tinker Cottage with the root furniture and just all the, the wood carvings that he has there on the site. And all these things are all kind of tie together with his founding of the Rockford Park District. My name is Samantha Hockman. I am the Director of Education and Management Services, uh, which means I focus on mostly the education portion of our museum, but also a lot with the social media, the events. We do have regular school field trips where the kids will come get a tour of the museum, and then they'll get a hands-on activity. We also go to the schools if they can't afford to come to us with our Tinker to the Schools program. So we will bring out baskets of Victorian clothing, and tools and fake foods and let the kids play around with some of those items. We also do Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts activities where they may come and do a creek study out at Kent Creek behind the cottage or they may come on an architectural tour. And on top of all that, we also do offer virtual Skype tours for people across the United States but also around the world. What did uh, Robert Tinker do? What was, what was his... So, Mr. Tinker got his money the old-fashioned way. He married a rich widow. Mary, his boss, was actually previously married to a guy named John Manny. And John Manny actually created a reaper mower. So it was a harvester for farmers, and it was a huge industry. Within a few years, John Manny did pass away and left Mary basically in charge of the company. So we have four different Skype tours. One is just an overview of the Victorian era, so we'll come and we'll walk through this first floor of the house and we discuss the family's life and how they participated in the community. We also then offer both an internal and external architectural tours. So the internal ones we go through and we point out pieces like the pocket door, the spiral staircase, this stairwell, he took a single piece of walnut and he steamed it for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for two years, every day, nonstop, until it worked just right. 
The exterior tours will talk about all the different beautiful Swiss architectural features on the exterior of the cottage. We have schools from around the world. We also have different clubs that will reach out to us. So just the other day I gave an exterior architectural tour to a group out in Pakistan who are studying architecture. And then this coming week I've got a group of middle schoolers from Brazil who are going to learn about interior architecture. Sure. Well, this does conclude our tour today. Thank you guys so much for Skyping with us. Thank you for having us. It was a great uh, tour. I came here before with my two grandkids, and we went through it, and we didn't even know it was haunted. And now we found that out. Now I come with my daughter and my granddaughter to hear about the hauntings. Well, we offer uh, paranormal tours as well. We've been doing those for about eight years and the public seems to love them. We ended up on uh, Ghost Hunters in 2012, and so that really helped us out, uh, not only us, but Rockford as well, as far as tourism goes. And it's a nice way to educate people about Victorian beliefs on the paranormal and the supernatural and what people believe today. So we fill them full of history, not only of the Victorian paranormal beliefs, but then also we take them on a night tour of the museum itself, and uh, you know, sometimes, things happen and sometimes they don't. We came for the ghost tour. I think we're just hoping to see some ghosts maybe. Yep. Or hear some ghosts. We're yeah. here for the haunted tour. Yes. And have any of you ever been here before? Nope. No. No. Nope. This is our first time in Rockford yeah. actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How far away did you come from? About an hour and a half. We yeah. From Lake County. Island. Tinker Swiss should be known uh, everywhere. My goodness. Uh, not only is there the historical implications but it's one of these hot spots where you can go and, and experience something almost any given time uh, during a paranormal investigation. I'd like to go over and go into the house and talk to some of the guests and explain to them, because I've been on investigations here at Tinker Swiss, explain to them some of the occurrences I've witnessed. As far as the paranormal goes, this is probably one of the most active rooms in the house. This is where we have just about every group that's been here if they catch any kind of evidence, it's usually in here. We had one group, and uh, I don't know if you know anything about Mr. Tinker, but he lost his foot in a train accident when he was about 70-ish. So the guys know this, and so they were down here, and they're kind of making a joke. They're like, hey, Mr. Tinker, because Mr. Tinker, his room his, is right up here. And so one of the theories is that he stays up there, right? That's kind of like his hangout. So here, keep going. So we were in this room, and I was coming back and then through the, you'll see a pass through in the dining room. As I was coming back, I saw all the lights go off. I never came up with a conclusive reason why that happened. I just know it felt like somebody's fingers. One of the interesting things about Tinker Cottage is that we have all the original furniture. When you go to most house museums, they have maybe one or two things in the house, but not everything. But with us, we're pretty unique in that pretty much everything in this house the uh, pieces of furniture, even the, the spoons, the plates, the forks, everything we have actually belonged to the Tinker family. This place is priceless not only in the artifacts that we have, but also in what we can teach the children and adults about local history and how they can be proud of where they are from. Honestly, I really like the house. Yeah. But I don't have like a favorite thing so far because the house is just beautiful and it's great. I actually see a lot of things that I like, but my favorite part of the house is the library. My favorite thing would be the books. I like the, the piano in the piano room. It's very nice. It looks very nice and elegant. It just looks like it's been there for a while. The best thing that I like so far is this room. I mean, because it shows all the historic figures like Cleopatra, I love her. And uh... the support of the community is critical because owning an old house and running it is just like owning any old property. Every time you turn around, something's breaking. We have security costs. Like recently, we had to replace some windows because of an icicle fell through them. So the support of the public is very important in running this house because anything we can do to help make the house run smoother, the easier it is for us to do public events and private events and support this great house in Rockford that is just a priceless piece of art in itself. Thank you.